All right, folks. I am officially at my favorite secret spot, my childhood river, what I like to call it, the river I grew up on, that I always come back to. Uh, today I'm fishing multi-species, mainly going after sauger, walleye, and white bass, but I will also catch largemouth, smallmouth, channel catfish, bluegill, grass carp, regular carp, gar, drum, crappie, and maybe even some other things. Uh, we have not had rain at all since the month of the end of July, I think. Maybe one real light rain in August. But other than that, it's really not rained for about two months. So the water's very low and clear. I have night crawlers set up for two of these poles. Then I have one with a crappie jig. Then I have one just for walleye. And then I have one for white bass, largemouth, and smallmouth with a crankbait. Um, <coughs> I usually have a tendency to use about 12 pound line, but I downgraded today. I'm using Mr. Crappie 8 pound line because this water is so clear and low that the fish will be very easily spooked. <coughs> what I'm doing is very hardcore wading. I'm gonna actually wait about three quarters of a mile, which is about six good holes, and then work my way back. I'm gonna try to come back to the car by three o'clock. It's 9.20 right now. And then what we're gonna do at three o'clock is go take a, an hour long break, go eat some kind of a midday lunch din slash dinner, uh, and then come back about four o'clock and just stay close closer to the car and fish the evening bite uh, specifically targeting walleye at that point in the evening um, I'm trying to get my personal best walleye or even one that's big enough to mount uh, I'm wanting like a seven or eight pounder the biggest one I've heard of getting caught out of here is seven pounds I've personally caught about a five pounder which was 24 inches um, it is October the 1st right now. This is the very first morning I've personally witnessed that was very chilly. We actually got up at 6 in the morning and it was so chilly that I was shivering. So that's a good sign that the walleye sauger are officially biting. Uh, the month of August was very mild. And it would have normally, the walleye start biting around here about the 17th to the 20th of September. But we had a really warm spell two weeks ago. So I don't think they were actually biting because of that heat wave. It was very humid, 100% humidity in, in the upper 90s, several days in a row toward the end of September, which is very rare. Oh boy, you talk about low. We need some rain bad. This is ridiculous. I'm telling you folks, this is probably one of the lowest times I've ever seen it. It is that low. It's spooky low, but that is not gonna stop me. All right, what I'm gonna do first is, out of everything I got, I'm, my method I'm gonna use is, every time I get to a hole, I'm gonna fish it with lures first for about 10 minutes. And then after I spook them a little while, then I'm gonna switch to worms and fish live bait. And I'm going to continue to do that same method at each hole. I'm always going to fish the lure first until they catch on or I catch several fish and they get spooked or whatever and then go to the night crawlers. I have drop shot rigs up for, for my night crawlers, which is a round weight with a hook about <clears throat> 8 to 12 inches above it to keep it off the bottom away from the channel cats and drum. And... Uh, and specifically target more game fish. All right, we're gonna get our first cast going here. I'm gonna check my drag to make sure it's set properly. It's just about right. I can't believe how low it is. Ain't that scary? 
Oh my God. The fish are gonna be very isolated. All right, I got my first fish, folks. And it is a spotted bass, I believe. Could be a largemouth. It's not a bad one. Look, honey. Think it's spotted bass. Yeah. He's fighting, though. Yep, definitely a spotted bass. That's a pretty guy though. About 11 inches. Real pretty design. I'm using a chartreuse. 3 inch twister tail. Made by Johnson. With a chartreuse head. Because wall, I love them. And that's what I'm after. We're going to put him back. We're not keeping anything actually. This whole week. Because we are staying in a hotel and not going home till the following Saturday Saturday so we got six more days so keeping fish is definitely out of the question first fish been about 10 minutes since I started fishing second fish an aquarium specimen it's a spotted bass about four inches long one inch longer than my twister tail. <laughs> All right, yeah. What a monster. Beautiful day here. It's gonna be a good day. I'm hoping to get some overcast weather, but it looks like it's bluebird skies for now. Oh, I just had one again. I seen a big white flash as soon as it hit when it was falling. There's something down in there. Oh yeah, yes, Wilma. Oh, it's a white bass, yes. All right, it's a hybrid, a hybrid striper. I've never caught one out of this river. It's a hybrid. Look at the design on it. You'll, you'll know without a doubt when you see the stripes because they're broken. It's a hybrid striper. Oh my God. I've, n I've fished this river my whole life and never caught one of these. See the stripes, how they're not four. It, a white bass has four bars. These are broken. Folks, new species for this river. I have never in my life, I fished this river for 20 years, caught hundreds and thousands of white bass, but never have I caught a hybrid striper. This is a hybrid. You can tell by the broken lines. A white bass has four really distinctive black lines. These have broken lines down in here, as you can see right in there, and up in the, at the top it gives it away, and the fins give it away, because it's more elongated than a white bass. My God, it's not a big one, but my goodness. You got one? Yeah. The only thing I can think of is I think they stock Lake Perry with hybrids. Smallmouth, all right, we're on a, we're on a multi-species meltdown here. I got a hybrid striper and she caught a smallmouth. Same time. And then we got a spotted bass. It's three species already. We're gonna what we're gonna do today, folks, is see. I'm gonna try to beat my record. I've gotten 12 kinds or 13 kinds in one day. This'll help. Now if I can get me a war mouth, which is rare out of here, I can up the chances. Alright, this is a nice little hybrid striper. We're gonna let him go. Amazing. It's small, but it's still just the rarity of it. That's what I said about this. This is why I come to this river is for the variety. You never know what you have on the other end of the line. Uh, today I will get largemouth, smallmouth, channel cats, bluegill, sunfish, skipjack, 
white bass, crappie, walleye, sauger, Asian carp, carp, black carp, grass carp, crappie, largemouth, or spotted bass, yeah. My goodness, we're on fire, man. All right, what do I got? Nice, whatever, something. I don't know what I got here. Can't see it yet, the sun's too bright. Oh, it was a little spotted bass. A little nine-incher. Unfortunately, my camera died and I didn't know I got species number four now Which is I only catch about one or two of these a year It's a spotted bass smallmouth hybrid or some people call them an X bass spotted X it's technically a smallmouth that is crossbred with a god smallmouth I gotta have the dang pliers to get this bastard out Anyway, it's a small mouse that is reproduced with a spotted bass or vice versa. Uh, what's weird about them is they're kind of like a brownish green color. Uh, I'm going to have to wash him off to really show you. So as soon as I get the hook out, I'll go wash him off and uh, you'll be able to tell a little easier what I'm talking about. It's very hard to even notice sometimes. <sighs> But they usually won't have the uh, they won't have the lines like a spotted bass does, but they'll have a really big pot belly and more of a greenish side to them. It, it's still brown. The head looks just like a smallmouth, but if you'll notice, he's got a green tint to him and a real big pot belly is one way to tell, just like a spotted bass would. But he's you notice he's like an olive color. And it's a big guy. I bet he's damn near a pound and a half because he's so bloated. So that's four species. We've got two rare ones already. So we got a good chance now of getting beaten my record of and seeing if I can get 14 different species in one day. Especially once I start live bait fishing. All right, we're going to put her back. It was a fun catch. He'll be all right. Oh, gosh. Mm -mm. We officially have species number five, a regular bluegill. So we're, we're getting up there. As soon as I get one of these carp and buffalo over here behind me, it'll go up to seven. But right for right now, it's five. And that is a big bluegill for a river. My gosh, that's a nice one. That's lake sized. I bet he's seven inches. 
hand size, eating size. Not bad. Right now I'm trying to night crawler for a little while, giving the lures a, a little break. I'm trying to get some other species such as drum channel, carp, buffalo, bluegill. And I got the bluegill now, so let's see what else we can get. Nope, this is a regular bluegill also. I'll eventually get a green sunfish or a long ear, which will add species to the list. Smaller guy than last time. Alright, bass. Nice bass. I'm using worms. Alright, I got me a nice little... Please be a largemouth. It'll add kinds, but I think it's a spotted. It is... It is a spotted. No, wait a minute. That is a real largemouth. Tell by the overlay of the lip right here. Real large mouth, six kinds. That's six. All right, species number six, true large mouth. Man, I'm getting them left and right. Mm, I've caught four on the same worm. One of the bluegill was real big. It was big, like the church size. You are you already got a pole set up just like this. It's a, a hook about a foot above a weight. Yep, another bluegill, folks. We're still at six species, but uh, you already got a pole down there set up for this, just like I do a, a drop shot rig. If you get every kind in here. And it is a regular bluegill again. Come on, give me a different kind here. You got one? All right, I think, folks, I think she's got, I think she landed one of these buffalo or carp up here. I was getting ready to go up there and start getting them myself. Oh, what do you got? Catfish? Oh, it's a catfish. I thought you were lucky enough to get one in buffalo. Hey, that's seven. Seven kinds. That's all that matters. It was a different kind. <sighs> and we have a regular bluegill again. So we didn't increase the species yet, but we do got seven because of her channel cat. So we are getting there fairly quick. Of course, the further you go up, the harder it gets. Got another spotted bass. It ain't bad. Huh, that's a large mouth. Yeah, see, it's a little bit deeper here than up there. Yep, that's a large mouth. Not too bad. Little, but still fish. I put monkey milk on. Monkey milk twister tail. Here, Let's see what you got. That's a catfish, little baby catfish. 
Oh, uh, shoot. Well, I'm going to go get my stuff and I'll bring the pliers. First white bass of the day. I, I just decided to throw my, toss my bandit crankbait out. We was about to go down to the next hole. Now I'm going to want to stay here a minute. That's a nice one. Yeah, it is. All right. Let's make sure it ain't another hybrid. Nope, this one is a white bass. All right. After getting that one hybrid earlier, now I'm going to be checking everyone. That makes, what, seven kinds or eight? Wasn't the catfish seven? The catfish was seven. Yeah, this is eight kinds. Because the other one was a hybrid. This is species number eight. We're looking at possibly getting 13 if the other ones ever start biting. All right, folks, another, or my first white bass of the day. He's about 10, 10 and a half inches, maybe 11. On a bandit crankbait. Metal Flake is the title of it. Nine. Or nine. Or was it ten? Was the white bass eight or nine? Oh, you lost count? Ah. Uh. It was eight. All right, we got number nine now. Long-eared sunfish. White bass was species eight. Long-eared sunfish, species nine. Now if we can get crappie and walleye, we'll be at 11. Oh yeah, getting to one of my favorite sections of the river now. Getting close to it. It's right around the bend down here. May get a cast or two in before long here. It's not very deep, but I have caught some fish from here in the past. So if I can get now, I'm at the point where if I get a crappie, walleye, or anything, buffalo or carp, then my next fish will be number 10. I'm on number nine right now. I have the possibility of 12 or higher, uh, but as of right now, I'm stuck on nine. Right now, I'm trying to get a crappie. Using a little inch and a half crappie jig. Well, it's hard to get across anymore. Really hard. It's widened out so much. It's changed a lot. It's really huge, but it's hard to get across. That ain't too bad. Well, there are some monsters in this hole, though. A lot of variety. I should be able to get lucky and get at least one four-pound bass, a walleye, or something different one of the deepest holes in the entire river, like I said. Oh yeah, big white bass again. Oh yes, it's a nice one. 
Oh, man, he's fighter. Wow. Boy, he really wants a way. Oh, there went a four pound bass. He came up to look at this big green bass about that long. He was curious. That's a nice white bass. That is a nice one here, folks. Oh, yeah. Boy, he's, he's a good... He's about 12 inches. Not bad at all. Only got him in one hook and not really hooked that great. All right, let's get a good look at him. Not bad at all. That's what we came here after. A good variety of fish in this river, I tell you. Like I said, you never know what you got in this place. You just never know. All right. Lovely fish. What a beauty. Guys like that, it's hard to, to entice them to bite. Really tough. I'm not saying they won't, but it's, it makes it difficult. Oh my God! Whoa! Oh, I don't know what this is. It ain't a white bass. No, it's a. It's got to be a large mouth. This is a big one. I gotta come your way. Oh man, this is about three or four pounds. It's gotta be a large mouth or a huge spot. Yeah, it's a large, no, it's a grass carp. Number 10, species number 10, folks. A grass carp on a crankbait, and he, I fair hooked him. I fair hooked him, he bit it. That was the last thing I expected. I've never caught one. Oh boy, he. <laughs> I've never caught one of these on a lure before. That's really weird. I'm trying not to, but you, I can't horse him. I only got 10 pound line on here. Yeah, he's nice. He's three or four pounds. Look at that. <laughs> right when you think he's tired, he fools you. Oh my gosh. I told you it would be worth worth coming down to this hole. <laughs> Alright, this is my first grass carp of the day. This makes species number 10. We got 10 kinds of fish in one day and we've only been here three hours. And this is the first time I've ever caught a grass carp on a crankbait. I've caught them on worms, and that's about it. He's a nice one. Oh, yeah. This fact, this is my first grass carp all year. Uh, they they don't tend to be down where I live at. So since, ever since I moved away from here, I don't really catch them like I used to. Whew. All right, we're going to get a good look at him, folks. He's about three or four pounds. I'd say three pounds, cause the, only because they're real bony and heavy. This is a grass carp. They look similar to a common carp, except they're not football shaped. They're long and slender. And they got more diamond, they got diamond shaped scales instead of uh, coin shaped scales. Beautiful fish, and they are one hell of a fight. When you get one on, you better hold on, that's all I can say. Because they do fight. Alright, we're going to make sure he makes it back in safely. All right, species number 10, grass carp. What a beauty.
after he pulled that started pulling I said there's no way this is a white bass I could just tell it wasn't white bass it don't get that bit well I don't fight that hard and I, then I thought it was a largemouth for the longest time oh yeah oh big gar I forgot about gar this is 11 if I can get him oh he threw it dang it that would have been 11 that was a gar but I didn't catch him so it don't count still at number 10 that would have been 11 I forgot all about gar as being added to the list that could have been what I had earlier oh three years ago um, 24 inches which isn't big for but it is for Missouri for you northern people it's nothing but uh, so that's what draws me back here large mouth oh. I had something. Oh yeah, you got something nice. It's either a big white bass or a carp. You might have got one of them grass carp like I had. Keep tension on it. Don't let your rod go loose. Keep tension on it at all times. No, keep tension on it. There you go. Don't let your rod go loose or your line. Just keep the line tight. You got something fairly decent. Hopefully it's a gar so it makes number 11 brown that's probably grass carp or buffalo then or a regular carp he's fighting that's for sure I can't see it yet. It's a, oh my God. Oh, it's a car. It's a regular carp. That's number 11. Yes, it's a common carp. That's your biggest one. Actually, you've never caught a carp. This is her very first carp here, folks. And this is species number 11 for us. Huh? It's okay. You got to let them get tired. You can't horse a fish in all the time. You got to learn to be patient. Sometimes it, you remember when I was down at Kentucky Lake, the Asian carp that were 20, 30, 40 pounds? It takes me, it was taking me 20 minutes. You can't expect to get them in in 30 seconds. It's just not like, if, if you got 30 pound line, yeah, you got to let them get tired because the fur, the closer he gets to you, the t more tension is going to be on your line and that he has more chance of snapping the line. The closer you get him in, the tighter your line's going to be. Just keep tension on it at all times. Keep that rod up and back like that. You don't, you don't want to let it, if you go loose, he'll get off. It's a chance that he ain't going to get off, but just let him get tired. You'll get him. That's species number 11 for us today, folks, and this is her very first common carp she's ever caught. Um, we came to this spot last year, and I caught two of them, and she never got a chance to get one. This may be her biggest fish she's ever caught, to be honest. He's about a five to seven pound carp, so it could be possibly her biggest fish ever. What'd you catch him on the crankbait? Oh, a worm. You're getting him, just be patient. It's gonna take a little bit. He's not small, he's not humongous, but it's, it's a nice carp. He's a good five or six pounds. 
He's getting wore out. Just give it a few more minutes, about two minutes. I told you this hole's worth walking down to. I'm going to get up here on the shore. Try not to set your rods that close to the water because what's happening Look what happened. You're gonna get sand, sand all in your reel and it messes it up. Oh, what do you got? This one is already on the water and running. Oh, so you had to throw that one down. Yeah, oh, I see. You, I want you to get it. You gotta learn, you need to learn how. Go like this. What you do is you take stabs at it. You put your pole in front of you like this and then you move your arm back and then you reel it in two cranks. There you go. Now pull it, pull it again, then reel it in two cranks. Then put your pole forward, and then pull your arm back, and then reel it in two cranks. See, you got a gain on them. There you go. You're learning. Okay. Folks, this ain't a bad carp. This is her very first one, like I said, and it's uh, her biggest fish ever, I think. And uh, like I also said, this makes species number 11. The reason I come to this amazing river is for the variety. We haven't even caught but maybe half the kinds that you can possibly catch in here. We're still missing crappie, song or walleye, uh, flathead, skipjack, warmouth, goggle eye, um, the buffaloes, gar and drum. got him yeah he's about he's about five, ooh, five pounds not a bad carp oh he's a, he's a fighter that's for sure and I might not need the pliers oh he was hooked real good Good job, baby. All right, I want you to hold it. Here, hold it. I'm gonna zoom in on you. I would wash him off, but I'm worried that I'll lose it. Oh, what did you do? Just fix it later. I want to get him back in the water soon. Here, you hold him up and I'm going to film you when you get that done. Oh boy, you got a mess. Oh boy. You ain't going to be able to get that out. It's just getting worse. What in the world is going on? That's that cheap line that comes with a reel. No, it isn't. That's stuff I put on. I don't know. It's 10 pounds something. I don't remember what brand. You got it wrapped around, yeah. No, uh -uh, real smooth. Okay, let me wash my hand real quick, and then we'll get you. Your very first carp, and your biggest fish ever, probably, isn't it? I think so. It's five pounds. All right, folks, we got. We're gonna zoom in on her very, very first carp, and possibly her biggest fish ever.
he's about five pounds. I actually have a scale, but it's not really worth weighing. I know he's not more than five pounds, but I'm going to say he's right at five. Good, decent carp. She caught him on a night crawler. And uh, I just noticed her struggling up here, so I ran over. That is awesome, honey. I guess we'll go ahead and put him back in. He'll swim away. He's tired for the day now. <laughs> Good job. You finally got to get one, huh? See, because last year we came here, I caught those two carp, and you didn't get a chance at one. Oh, yeah. When I, when I was over here, there's a school of them, about 50 of them. There's tons of them in this hole, because it's one of the deepest holes in the river. Oh yeah, what do I got? A sauger! Yeah! 12, 12 kinds. All right, folks, I just got a sauger. We've got, we got 12 kinds, so I'm tied for my best record ever. If we get one more species of fish, I beat my record of all time for most kinds in one day. <laughs> oh, what a beautiful sauger. He's only about 13 inches, but he is really dark and very, very pretty. I caught him on a monkey milk four inch grub with a plain jig head. Usually saugers are known for wanting bright stuff like orange, yellows, and greens, pinks. I caught him just on a plain white or monkey milk with no, just a lead head with no paint on it. Sauger, finally. I knew they'd be in this hole if we were patient enough. Wow. He's a small guy. He's only about 12 inches, but boy, that is a beautiful sauger. Now I need a walleye and a crappie, and we'll have 14. That makes 12 species, folks. Where else can you go that you can think of and catch 12 species of fish? Not very many places. Maybe the Niagara River, Mississippi, but it's very uncommon that you actually catch that many kinds. It's a little sauger. It's not, definitely not big, but it's one of the kinds I've been after today. I'd like to get me a big 18 inch. The way you can tell the difference between a sauger and a walleye is a walleye will have a white tip on their tail Saugers have many black dots on their top fin, their dorsal fin, and a walleye don't. A sauger is also more colorful, has more camouflage, where a walleye is just more of a solid color. And they both, they both got very, very sharp teeth. Just look at that. Look at their teeth. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's really sharp. You can it. All right, we're going to let him go because I like to ensure that they're in here at all times. One thing about these saugers, folks, is you cannot catch them during the summer months unless you're fishing at night. Uh, they're more of a winter fish. They bite best from, they usually start sometimes right after Labor Day, depending on what state you're in. But as a general rule, late September until Look, he's still here. <laughs> he's still swimming around. Look. Uh, late September till about the first week of April. Uh, now, I, she caught her first sauger this year, and it was Memorial Day weekend. Um, so, you just never know. But typically, when it's really hot and really sunny, you're not going to catch them. They're more of a... They're low light feeders, both walleye and sauger. You will catch them more on a cloudy day than you will on sunny days. You want it to be cloudy. And when it starts getting in the lower 50s and down in the 40s at nighttime, and then the high temperatures for the days are only in the lower 70s, that's when you want to start getting out there and going after them saugers. Um, they bite best after long periods of little or no rain, when the rivers have a chance to clear up and turn green again instead of muddy, 
that's when you want to get out there and go after them. They love that green colored water. Um, when it's real murky, you're generally not going to catch them. That is why I come to this river, even though it's a two and a half hour drive from my home. It just, it's so much different from what I'm used to living around my area. None of the rivers even compare to this one. The reason for it is where I live, none of the creeks or rivers go into the Mississippi River. This one goes directly into the Mississippi River. So every spring during the floods, the river is rejuvenated from fish that migrate up these rivers. Because from where I am right here, it's only about eight miles to the Mississippi. It changes a lot as it goes down, uh, but that's still not that far for a fish to travel. Alright, yes, another, what is this? Smallmouth, nice smallmouth. Yes. Oh yeah. He's a good 14 inch right there. 13. I only catch nice fish on this bandit. I don't catch any small ones. They're always, anytime you get a bite, it's usually a, a serious fish. Ooh. I hurt his eye. Pretty nice smallmouth right there. Nice October smallmouth. Doesn't get any better than this. I tell you. Amazing fish. Amazing lure. For those of you who don't know what I'm using, I highly recommend this lure. It has caught me so many fish this year, including three 15 inch crappies. It is a bandit. 200 series and it's called metal flake it's chartreuse with little chrome strips on the side a gray top with glitter a white bottom it is one amazing crankbait very rarely get it hung up it has the perfect swimming action it bounces off logs um, for the most part you don't get hung up unless you make a real bad call and just make a dumb cast Typically, it bounces off. I mean, it's got the perfect depth, which is about six to eight feet for most places. And uh, like I said, it just caught a variety of, of fish for me. It's outfished any crankbait I've ever used. Oh, I got another nice one. Ooh, I don't know what this is. It's big, whatever it is. Oh my gosh. Whoa, what a hoss. It's a drum or a buffalo. Folks, this makes 13 right here. It is a drum. 13 species in one day. I have officially beat my all-time record of most fish in one day, most different kinds. This is about a five, six pound drum. Absolute hoss on the bandit crankbait again. Oh, and he inhaled that thing. I can barely see the bill sticking out of his mouth. He literally engorged it. My gosh. That's too bad that couldn't have been a white bass or a large mouth, but hey, it's 13 kind. My God, that's the biggest drum I've caught in a long time. He, you know, he's about freaking seven or eight pounds. My gosh, folks, look at this drum. He's eight pounds. My God. 13. We did it. We did it.
13. Yeah, since I'm going over here, I can get a twister tail. We did it, 13. I caught a big smallmouth down there too, a nice 14 incher. This is a, about a seven pound drum. That makes 13, we did it. 13 kinds. Look how bad he inhaled this bandit crankbait. You can barely see the bill sticking out. I thought I had a large mouth or something or huge white bass, it turned out to be this guy. But hey, that made 13 though, so it's okay. That's a big drum, my goodness. Look how bad he inhaled it. All six hooks are in there. Yeah, he's about seven or eight pounds. Folks, that is a big drum. Just look at how he inhaled that lure. I mean, it's deep. He's already bleeding to death, and I'm gonna have to definitely get pliers to get him. That's the biggest drum I've caught in a while. He hit the bandit. Oh, I thought I was into something real there. Now, if that would have just been a large mouth, boy. I mean, but yeah, let's weigh that thing. I bet he he might be heavier than what I think. He might be nine pounds. Oh no, I left it. Oh my God. That means the measuring tape too. I left it in the dang box. Shit. Of all the things I could have forgot, yes, I forgot them. It's in the blue box in the bedroom. I'm gonna have to retie this lure. Oh my goodness. Uh, I'm telling you right now, he's eight pounds. Well, I'm trying to figure out where they are. Okay, I see it. Oh, man. I don't care if I'm going to end up getting the other hooks in there, too. Well, I had to. <clears throat> Damn, I just bent that hook. Not real bad, but I bent it. I was just saying how awesome this lure was to everybody on the video, that how many different kinds of fish it's caught for me, and how big a one. That is an eight or nine pound drum right there. It's, it's a monster drum. Wow. Do me a favor, make sure the camera is on. Can you see it, the screen on? Is yeah. it? Okay. Well, I'm going to put him back, but folks, that is a nice drum. Right when I was just talking about how good that bandit crankbait is, like I said, catches some big fish. I've never caught little fish on it. Very rarely. God, that's a monster. Look at that thing. <laughs> we did it we got 13 freaking kinds oh well the tape measure and scale ain't that important it, I will want it when I get crappie though <laughs> he's just hanging out by the tree trunk <laughs> definitely retying this couple feet up now and grab a twister tail again See, I scared the fish for a while down there. Don't worry, we're going soon. Try to get one more. If I can get a walleye or a crappie, that makes 14. See, what you do is come here about three or four hours, then you go to the Mississippi River to get 14, 15 times, or you go back up river from here and get a uh, goggle eye and like signers and horny head chub and stuff you can 
micro pit and easily do it. It's just amazing the variety of fish we have caught today. It's just crazy. We haven't even caught near all of them yet. We still got gar and two kinds of buffalo. And I've caught flathead out of here once in a while. There ain't many of them. But there is some. What's he doing? Just sitting there? Yeah. It ain't going. No better month than October, I'm telling you. October is... Okay, where's my pliers? Oh. <laughs> He's just hanging out. He's just chilling. He like the film. Chilling like a villain. Okay. It's okay. It's neat though. Are you zoomed in? Mm -hmm. What? Oh my God. Hold on. Grass carp? All right, folks, she just got something fairly large over here. I believe it's a grass carp by the way it looks from here. Uh, carp or grass carp, it's hard to tell. I'll be right there. There's another carp. Now, if that's a buffalo, that's 15. Let's see. Man, you're slaying them. That is a buffalo. That's 15 kinds. Oh my God. We beat our record, or that's 14 kinds. That's 14. That's a buffalo, sure as, sure as heck, yeah. That's a smallmouth buffalo. Oh my gosh. You drug my food again. All right, folks, we got, we just got, no wait, is that 13 or 14? It's 14, because the drum was 13. My gosh. No, it's 14 kinds. The, dr the drum was, the drum was 13. All right, folks, she just got a nice, about a five to six pound, yeah, about five and a half, six pound buffalo. That makes 13 or 14 kinds for us. My God, 14 species of fish in one day in just a few holes on this nice river here. Talk about an amazing day. All right. Okay, go ahead and put it back in. Good job. I lost my dang green twister tail again. God. You caught your two biggest fish in one day. Oh my god. I hold a tail. I might have oh, to get. Oh, that's a nice buffalo. 
Yeah, it is. You gonna get the players? I got it. Right, we're gonna put him back. That's a nice buffalo. That's nice and clean. It ain't all beat up like the ones at Wampapello. Man, what a beauty. It's a small mouth buffalo. Doing amazing. And that ain't even really that deep where you're at. It's deeper down there. But they're in there. It's deep enough to have them. Oh, yeah. That's a tiny one. Whatever it is. Could it be 15? Mm, nope, because I've already caught a sunfish. And it's a long ear, same kind as I had earlier. If it would have been a dollar, sunfish, then it would have been 15. But we're still at 14, and I'm content with that. Oh, yeah. Yes. Guess what, folks? I just got a big crappie that makes 15. <laughs> oh, yes. About a nine inch black crappie that makes 15 kinds. 15. <laughs> Honey, 15. Honey, 15. Fifteen. Crappie. About nine or ten inches. <laughs> Fifteen kinds. Oh, we beat our record by three now. It was twelve. And now. We got 15, folks. Nice crappie, too, on the bandit crankbait again. I tell you, there's nothing this thing can't catch. Not a thing. What a beauty. All the crappie in most of this river are black until you get way down further in the lowland region. Then you run into some whites. It's a nice crappie, nonetheless. All right, 15 kinds. See you later, buddy. Man, that's just crazy. God. Serious? At one time? She's got two fish. She's fishing with both poles out with night crawlers and she said she's got two fish at the same time. I guess she hooked this and one was reeling it in and then the other one bit before she had this all the way in. My God. Oh, a channel cat. That ain't a bad one. Okay, I'll get it. It's not going to pull it in. It's okay. <laughs> My goodness. Another buffalo. Alright, we got a channel cat and another big buffalo. God, we got all these reels have mud all over them from laying it in the gravel. That's a nice buffalo. He's another five or six pounder. He's about four or five pounds. Nice nonetheless. Too bad it wasn't a black buffalo. Now hold on, if it's a big mouth, it's a different kind. See if it's a small mouth or big? It's a small mouth, same kind as earlier. Gosh. <laughs> you get the pliers. All right, man, we did. Amazing. I think I can get this one.
Nope. Have to cut it. Mm. It's a nice buffalo. Yeah. All right, folks. She just got her second buffalo. This thing is pretty monstrous. He's he's bigger than I thought. He's yeah. He's easily five. Hold him sideways for a second if you can, where you put your hand on the bottom too. Good job. It's her second buffalo of the day. <laughs> your line line's probably weak now. Her second uh, smallmouth buffalo of the day. I'll just zoom in on it like this. Yeah, that's a nice fish. Man. Smile and I'll be able to get it. Now, now put, put it down a little bit where I can see your face and we'll get a good picture from it later. Good job. Man. See, I should have been more patient and used worms and just sat there. I'm def definitely going to try that more tomorrow. Oh, I missed two walleyes since I've been here. That is sad. God. Got him. Oh, yeah. It's a big one, too, whatever it is. I think it's a bass, though, not a walleye. Still nice, regardless. Yeah, that's a large mouth. Oh, I thought one of them hits was a uh, walleye earlier, though. They have a unique bite. All right, this is a spotted bass. He's a fairly decent guy, not bad. Probably a pound or so. All right, we're gonna put her back. I got about 20 good minutes of daylight before I gotta run like hell to the car. I'm trying to get an evening walleye. Oh, what do I got here, folks? Oh, man, it's big, whatever it is. Nice fish. It's another spotted bass. No, this might be a largemouth. Boy, it's a nice one. Oh, yeah. Man. Boy, he's, he's a fighter. My goodness. What a bruiser. A nice one. And it is a spot. Boy, it's a big, fat spotted bass. My God, no, that is a large mouth. That is a pure large mouth. Boy, they are on fire tonight, guys. All day. Ever since that cloud cover came in. There we go. That's a nice large mouth. About two and a half pounds. Oh, boy. He did not want to give up so easy. What a beauty. All right. I'm gonna put him back. We're still not getting that walleye yet. But there's time. Like I said, I got about 20 measly minutes, and that's it. So if I could just hook the right kinds instead of what I'm hooking, then I'd be on the money. Hold on. What is ah? What is that? Oh my God, Wilma, is that a bass? I caught two, two large mouths. Oh my God, that is a. The other one is big. That is a large mouth. That's your biggest one. But the All right, other folks. one is easy to pick it up. She just got three personal bests in one day. This one's her large mouth. It's about. Three and a half, almost four pounds. Man, that's a hoss for in here. All right, let me, good job. I caught two pass and no walleye. All right. Let, hold on, I'm gonna take a picture too. I'm gonna just hold still a minute. Good job, wow. That's your biggest bass, isn't it? Wow. He's about. It's big too, but it's easy to pick it up. 
That big? Mm -hmm. That is a real large mouth. Wow. I caught two bass and nothing else. I had and a sauger. I had a sauger bite, but couldn't get him. He didn't really bit it. I don't understand why they weren't, that hole ain't as good as it used to be. I'm telling you, this crankbait, there's something magical about it. That's what I just was caught all the big ones earlier on. All right, folks. My girlfriend's personal best largemouth bass, about three and a half, almost four pounds, maybe. I'd say three and a half. Big nonetheless. We have had just an amazing day. My only complaint is the walleye weren't in the mood, but everything else seemed to bite really well. I caught one about two and a half pounds up there, largemouth. Man, that's nice. Three, how'd you get? You got three personal best in one day, though. <laughs> Carp, buffalo, and bass. God. We broke a lot of records today, the most ever.